So far, we haven't dealt with ground or N when measuring biosignals. Remember, when measuring ECG, we usually have it on the right leg or the right hip. However, does it matter? Just now, here on my laptop, I am recording Eindhoven 1, where I've got the positive input of the amplifier on my left shoulder and the negative input on my right shoulder, and ground is connected to my right leg. So, what will happen if I suddenly move ground to some other random position, like, for example, here on my neck? Let's find out. We see that the signal doesn't change at all. So does it matter where I put ground on my body? Well, to understand what ground does, we need to have a look at how a standard bioamplifier measures a biosignal. So we'll take the first signal from my left shoulder and this is going to be the difference between a positive input and ground. The second signal is going to come from my right shoulder and that's going to be the difference between the negative input and ground. And the actual biosignal will be the difference between the two. So, biosignal. Right. Now, if I take the first two equations and put them together, then this is what I'll get. And here I see that ground actually cancels out. And that's why it doesn't matter where I put ground on my body. But the question is, do I need ground at all? And the answer to that is yes, I do need ground because amplifiers need a ground. Someone though could conclude, well, if it doesn't matter where I put ground on my body, can I not just place it at the same place where the negative electrode is? So then I have both ground and negative under the same electrode. Let's have a look. There. We see that that's perfectly fine. And if we kind of want to get rid of ground, then this is the trick that we need to apply. This way, it is done in some commercial devices like, for example, this chest strap over here with the two electrodes, which are used to measure our heartbeat. However, the ATIS also does this trick with its second channel, where it connects ground and the negative input internally like so. So this is ground. 
And here we have the second channel. All right, let's have a look. There we go. Perfectly fine. We see that the ECG is still on my first channel and the EMG is on the second. So to conclude, let's compare these two. We see here that the EMG using just two electrodes has got much more 50 hertz noise, whereas the ECG is pretty clean. Well, three electrodes will give you a much better power line rejection than the two electrode version. In the old analog days, three electrodes were absolutely necessary to get rid of power line interference, whereas today we can equally use two electrodes plus the power line filter and eliminate any power line interference.